Hey, mate, it's James Doomsis here. How's it going? Yeah, good. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Are you free for a chat? Yeah, mate. Um, did you get the map I sent you? Yeah, I'm just looking at it now, actually. I can see that spot where you're saying the camp, just off the creek. Yeah, that's the spot. It's a, it, it's a good little little area, and I wouldn't be too surprised if you did see some um, deer lurking about early in the morning, just um, out on the flat. They seem to like it down there. Well, hopefully we can get lucky and find a few then, but we'll be leaving Friday afternoon after work, so by the time we make it out to you and set up camp, it's going to be pretty late. Um, is it all right if we just come and check in at some stage over the weekend? Yeah, sounds like a plan. Just drop in the house whenever you go past and let us know what you're up to. Yeah, perfect. Well, thank you again for having us out, and uh, we'll see you on the weekend. No worries. See you then. See you, mate. Our goods coffee. Well, now that I can actually think, I'm going to quickly whip up some bacon and eggs. Where we've got camp set up is on the back of a big spring system. Um, and the property owner said that you know, he wouldn't be surprised if we see some deer from camp. So just going to get the spotting scope out, have a bit of a glass, um, and see if we can see anything before we move off up into the basalt country. Well, I love this time of the morning. I've just been glassing this flat for about half an hour now and haven't really turned up anything, seen a couple of roos. Um, we've got the brogas going off behind us, which is awesome. I love seeing them here and them. But um, yeah, I guess the plan for the day is every time I spoke to the property owner before this trip, all he said was sort of, you know, springs and flats, springs and flats and deer, 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 like, you know, they go together. But I think they'll still be feeding on here, but we're at the end of the wet season now. Um, so all this black, black soil and black tea tree I think it's a bit marshy and sort of underwater. So I expect the deer to sort of feed down there and move up into the basalt. So it's a bit overcast today. So as soon as it starts heating up, I think they'll sort of start moving off. But um, we'll take snacks and just sort of go out all day. It doesn't mean that we'll be walking too far, just sort of really slow pace, a lot of time behind the glass, because these guys, they're so switched on in this environment and they'll easily pick us up a couple of hundred meters away. So. Hopefully, um, hopefully we can see him first and get an opportunity, but yeah, day one, excited to see what it might bring. We've just moved up onto this basalt knob and just having a little bit of a glassing session. Um, we've sort of got 180 degree views of all basalt ridges with a lot of nooks and crannies in the, in the shade and just trying to see if we can um, pick out some antler tips in the grass. The sun's just starting to poke out and it's going to be a lot of slow glassing and really slow walking um, for the rest of the morning just trying to find these dags bedded up. reward a few efforts. First chill that we've seen on this property and it's a really nice stag. It's about 250 meters away on the basalt wall. We've just parked 
up a couple hundred meters off them. Just gonna get the spotting scope out and have a look and sort of assess the situation a bit. Just gonna see what's gonna be the best way to get in. Hopefully make something happen. From where we were glassing up earlier, I've done a big loop to get this line of basalt in between us and the deer. Um, there was a really good line of trees down, but it looked like it was going to stop about 50 metres out, and it's pretty hard in that last short distance to sort of change your angle. So we've come in here, and hopefully, there's enough cover that we can make it into bow range to get it done. There's a lot of eyes there. Um, hopefully, it stays overcast because if it gets sunny, they'll probably get up from where they're bedded and, and move, which could be pretty detrimental to this stalk but you know we've got to take the risk and move in while we have the advantage. As we approached another stag joined the mob. The two stags started fighting so we quickly rushed in to take advantage of the situation. Those stags have stopped fighting. Um, there's a lot more hinds there than what we anticipated, and they sort of have kept us at bay, I guess, because uh, there's, there's a lot of cover in here. But there was just too many eyes, and we didn't want to risk it. So we've taken the boots and packs off, and uh, hopefully wait for them to settle down, and then move in. found the deer, they're bedded about 200 meters in front of us and um, we had to pretty slowly go past all the wallabies that um, really love dancing on the tin. They, uh, the property owner must use this bit of the basalt as sort of a, a scrap heap because there's old trucks and cars and every other piece of metal lying around so a little bit of noise to dodge but um, we'll keep moving in. Hopefully this wind stays consistent. It's done a couple of 180s already while we've been sitting here in the shade. So. Hopefully it stays, it stays true and we can get in on these deer. I don't really know what happened there. So you can still hear them barking over the ridge. Whether it was um, that wallaby ran through with our bedded or whether the wind switched or I caught a bit of movement. None of them were really, um, when they stood up, started randomly barking, none of us had us pinned or were looking our direction. Keep going, it's been a pretty long stalk. It's been a couple of hours now. It's not over yet. After relocating the mob, we noticed a lone stag bedded to the side. With ample cover and a good breeze, we moved in.
37 meters off the stag. And he's looking pretty content. So I'm take a bit of a risk and try and make something happen. Sort of cut back into a big loop. Fingers crossed we'll use the lay of the land and how he's lying to, to get in a bit closer. And um, hopefully we'll be able to get it done. But it's pretty late in the afternoon now, so it's a bit risky because he might get it up. So I'm going to move on. Well, it's not often that a plan comes together. Uh, we take a lot of risks in bow hunting and often you're sort of left with your head in your hands at the end of it wishing you'd stuck with your original plan, but yeah, it couldn't have really asked for better conditions having a lone stag bedded. Um, it's, it's what we all dream of. But yeah, I was, ended up making my end and I spooked one of those little wallaroos that have just been giving us hell all day. He ended up sort of presenting a shot quartering away at 25 metres and um, sent the Oz cutting nexus through and yeah, he's taken out the last rib on one side and broken the offside shoulder and he's made it maybe 40 or 50 metres, but really beautiful animal, lovely cape. I'm, I'm just pumped and over the moon to get such a nice animal on the ground, especially on the first day of the new property. So, oh, i just got to get my hands on him. Well, it's pretty easy to understand why they don't go very far when they're covered like that. Well, it's moments like these that we dream about as hunters um, to get the drop on such a, a beautiful and majestic animal. Um, these guys are just so in tune with their environment. To be able to stalk into 25 metres and get one with a bow is no easy feat, but we'll um, get to work caping him out and taking his antlers, but then also take all this meat home and have it with our family and friends. So, a lot of work ahead of us tonight. <laughs> 